And thank you for the previous presentation. I think it was really, really inspiring. I think everyone can hear me, right? Should I talk louder? Everyone can hear me? OK, uh, first of all, again, Joseph, thank you so much. It's a pleasure. I'm going to kind of go through a lot of the stuff I've been doing uh, in the last years. Uh, just briefly going to introduce myself, really briefly. Uh, every time I do a presentation, I kind of need to explain a little bit where I came from and what I do. And um, it's kind of a weird situation. I grew up in Portugal uh, in the 80s. And uh, my kind of, I, I'd like to, I used to party a lot back in the days. And I used to love electronic music like I do today. And uh, what I did was pretty much what a lot of us uh, used to do, which is going out a lot and listen to a lot of electronic music. And uh, I kind of started by doing music, actually, uh, when I was kind of young. And that's how I started to play with computers. You start to use timelines. You start to edit. Uh, at some point, I was also studying drawing and uh, kind of more fine arts. And uh, I, got, I saw myself involved with working with Flash and doing some kind of interactive work, doing vector design and something between uh, multimedia and uh, digital video. So what happened was pretty simple. Uh, back in the days, I, I wanted to be involved in, um, in the party scene. So I actually started to create a lot of uh, installations Let's see if we can open this. Pretty much uh, what, I was go what I started to design and do a lot of uh, solutions for. OK, this is probably on my side. Anyway, it's, it's not too relevant. Uh, basically, what I started to do, I started to bring imagery into audio events. Because electronic music, as you know, is mostly uh, Back in the day, especially, it was pretty much uh, strobe lights and a lot of people having fun. So it was an opportunity for people working with other media, like visual media, to kind of bring something to, the, to these events. And this is how everything started for me. Uh, I can show you pretty much what a VJ does and what it is a VJing. Uh, pretty much, I'm sure you, all of you have seen something like this. Uh, it's a way to cut files, to find ways to express ourselves, to uh, editing, usually in real time. Uh, back in the days, we kind of used to work with After Effects, we used to work with whatever software, Premiere, Final Cut, to, to do these things. And then we have like some kind of uh, way to trigger clips. We, we have to find ways to kind of find the balance with the music. And this is what a, a VJ is, and I kind of consider myself a VJ. Uh, pretty much means that I, I found ways to illustrate music in real time. Uh, the interesting part of all of this, uh, and it kind of goes within the story that I want to tell, is how I, I found myself in academia, which is kind of interesting. Because I guess like probably like a lot of us here, I was not really that good of a student back in the days. But uh, somehow, the things I was doing in school, in the university, were actually what I call my, what it might be described as a VJ work, uh, even though back in the days, the, back, we're talking the beginning of 2000, uh, the school, the university, didn't really allow me to present these things as a part of my major, as a part of my final project in fine arts. So that kind of gave me the motivation to do my master thesis uh, about writing about how academia was not understanding what VJing is in terms of real-time performance and real-time art. And after I finished the dissertation, I kind of uh, was invited to go back in school and teach uh, these things that academia didn't really uh, allow me to even present back in the day. So that's how I found myself involved in academia. And uh, I was three years a full-time professor, still working with projects and doing things uh, within this kind of universe illustrating music. And uh, after that, the, we're talking now 2009, I got a PhD grant to come to the US to do a, what I'm doing right now, which is a PhD in UT. So this is kind of the story, how I see myself in academia. Uh, because of my uh, habits of having a lot of fun at the night uh, with my friends in the nightlife, and enjoying really good music in a weird environments, I find myself now doing a PhD. And this is literally true, guys. I'm not, I'm not even joking. 
So I, I, I just. <laughs> So anyway, so but this kind of brought me some interesting elements into what, what I do because it kind of gets old to VJ and to get drunk for a lot of nights. You kind of want to move on and find something that you might want to find more elements in terms of design, more elements in terms of doing something uh, that involves more thoughts and more uh, other elements. I guess just like the previous presentation, an opportunity to bring other performers, other artists, and to collaborate with. So here we go. This is pretty much what I did when I first moved to Austin. This was my first project. Uh, one of the things when I moved to Austin that I kind of realized early, video mapping here was not happening. This was 2010. So I started to work with Art Scene Alliance, a production guys. They do art outside in, in, in Austin. It's a good festival. So they, the Warren kind of brought me in and uh, let's make some stages. So we, we kind of start to build some stuff and actually I start to make some video design that incorporate these elements. So this is an extension of the VJ activity, as you can see, but we're now going and bringing kind of third dimension to the video elements. It's one projector and we kind of need to understand how this design element works and we need to make content that works in this unique perspective. And this, I guess, back in the days in Austin, I don't think there was a lot of it going on. So this kind of brought me some other opportunities to, to start to do other projects, which, which I'm really quickly going to go through. So this is me kind of designing this stage uh, this is already the stage being presented in a few, it, it did some festivals around this area. Uh, let me show you a really quick video. And this is one of the few videos I have with parties involved, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> Just you guys, I have a, okay, let's start actually. We, we actually do our own parties here. Really? Yes. Okay. It's a, it's a wet campus. A wet campus? Okay, so, it sounds awesome. So I'm, I'm, I'm just going to, uh, really quick, just to have an idea. So uh, you de we designed some animations like After Effects. This is actually using Quartz, uh, reacting to Odd in real time. There is some pre-render other artist animations we can bring in. And it's a lot how we can unite these animations in one shape. And. Uh, it's a lot of fun, as you can see. You're like playing with this canvas, and it has a lot to do with light as well, and understanding the music and kind of giving that sensation back to the public. So, VJing and 3D video mapping. It's it's been happening in the last years more and more and more. I did this was back 2011. After this, I got this. This was in New York. Similar strategy, sim similar stage design, other ideas. This is actually uh, one of the. F I actually got a gig after that to go to Shanghai, where I was given a massive bridge. Uh, and I had the opportunity to, to do something completely different. I actually did video mapping on this bridge, but yeah, I actually wanted to use different elements. So actually, we use LED panels, which I'm, I imagine a lot of you know what it is. And I combine with front projections as well. And this was actually a pretty nice setup because this is a river, this is a, a bridge, and you can see there is buildings bu bu on the other side of the river, and this is actually hanging up there. So this was an opportunity, again, this has a lot to do also with stage design. So the VJ uh, kind of experience is bringing me back in 2011 to kind of having a, a wider approach to what it is to do live video, which is actually thinking about the stage, thinking about other elements. It has a lot to do with design by the end of it. Uh, and this is, what, one of, this is actually one of my favorite projects that I did in Austin since I got here. This was, I believe, in the end of 2011. And um, this project w was uh, called Land Without Evil. I don't know if any of you have seen this show. This, this show kind of illustrates, uh, for me, thinking about video and space, uh, a great opportunity to, to kind of think over the, uh, outside of the box. So this situation is pretty simple. We have uh, 2D stage design, which is kind of like a, a panel. There is no depth. But we want to recreate depth. So what do we do with it? 
we, we put, we, this is all wood. And what we did pretty much find these areas here that we put fabric. And with fabric, we can have lights coming below it. So we can actually morph and bring depth to something that is 2D and flat. Let me show you an image here that kind of illustrates that better. So this is a, a pretty much the content that I designed uh, pretty much in a, an After Effects. And uh, projected here, you can bring the illusion of depth. And this is what a lot of 3D video mapping is. It's not so much about, uh, it can be also w what kind of three-dimensional object you have, but it's a lot of bringing things that don't really exist in there. So let me show you a really quick example of this. I just found this video a few days ago that this performer, this, is what, this was one of the scenes. Uh, as you can see, that the, the, the light coming from below the fabric kind of brings a new dimension to this projection area. Uh, moving forward, I want to show you something that I like a lot. This was a project, 2012, uh, thinking about 3D video mapping um, and what it is to do to perform as a VJ, but now you're being asked to perform a 3D video mapping uh, gig, which is an extension of the VJ gig, but using a whole massive building. So I'm going to let this one play for from the beginning to the end. So this was 2012, and when I do a presentation, I kind of like to go through some of the files because I know some of you are students and might be interested to see how can you actually set up something like this. So the first thing you need is actually the 3D file of the building, right? And uh, there is other software out there. There is like Blender, which is open source. It's free. Uh, I usually use Cinema 4D. It's kind of expensive, but it. It's pretty reliable and it's kind of easy to learn. Yes? That's why, uh, what is it? I've, I've seen that video. Oh, you've seen that video? Yeah, I've seen that. <laughs> and through that video, I started looking at stuff and talking to Jason and I saw, I found uh, people. 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 Right. And then I, that's why I thought about Cinema 4 it's, it's so funny because I saw your video and I'm like, I, I saw this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we played it in class. The guy's like, right here. This is one of the best videos we've ever yeah. seen. <laughs> I didn't get, know you had done that one. It's okay, this was a part of a festival which is called Kernel Festival in Italy, in Milan. And, uh, and it's, it's, a, it's a whole video mapping festival. They, they bring in artists that just do video mapping. So it's yeah. like for two, three nights, different gigs from different artists. They, they put us working with different bands and DJs. And, uh, and the, the magic in here is pre pretty simple. Like in terms of uh, if you guys are doing a 3D video mapping or whatever project, 
uh, something you really want to look out for. So if you if you notice here, I have a render output camera, which is the camera position that is the same uh, position as the video projector. And that's kind of like the main element in terms of the configuration setup strategies you want to do for this. It's simple as that. When you guys thinking about the virtual camera on the 3D software, make sure it's the same close, the closer so you get, the easier it is. Like you got the pro, the lens, pesto. Yes, it, you're right. Like out, yeah. Correct. Open and it, the, close, the closer you get, the, the, there is, nowadays there is actually systems like uh, Pandora and media servers that can actually correct all these things pretty reliable, but the closer you have your 3D files from the original position, the easier it will be. And MadMap, or you can actually go in and tweak, and I have to do all that, you know, you know even uh, having a pretty accurate uh, camera. Like a, like a 20,000 lumen, or like how many? Lumen? This was 220K. Two okay. two. I'm going to show one, uh, the recent one I did, which is using yeah. 1220K. I did this a few months ago, yeah, in, in, in Kansas. So, uh, and after this, it's pretty much uh, in terms of animation. I think I have some files here. Let me see. Uh, yeah, some, some of the original files you've seen. Like, for example, this is like the, the raw three. V, uh, 3D animation that you've just seen, pro possibly mixed with other stuff, with other elements. But this is what I'm projecting on the building. Some, some of these animations are as simple as this. And it's afterwards, it's how can you combine all these animations together. Uh, we're, we're actually given by the, 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 the kernel. They actually, that's a part of kind of like the logistic of the festival. They, they will give in order the, the VJ or the, the visual artist who can work with. And to be honest, most of the projects I've done so far, uh, even the one that I'm going to show in a little bit, if you're lucky, you probably get a 2D file and it's pretty easy to, to create a 3D extrusion of this 2D file. Nowadays, if it's a public building, or if there is some kind of architecture plan, you can probably find it. And worst case scenario, I mean, Google Earth is kind of like, it's kind of pre, pretty close to, to have a pretty good idea what you're working on for architecture projection. If you're designing something, you might want to do it for sure. You might want to want to design it. So uh, moving on, same idea, same thing. This was for National Geographic. Uh, I guess 2013 maybe, just one minute for the anniversary, the anniversary. Same situation, we were given a 3D video file. Uh, there was other people working with me as well. Uh, it's a very collaborative process. It goes from, you, the, but the whole thing about, I guess, the VJ culture, because back in the days we had to bring our own project, we had to set up our own project, we had to figure out our, all by ourselves. No, there was no team, no production team to help us. You know, We're doing this because we love it. So it's like you're by yourself. So the, the good thing about that is I'm pretty independent these days. I can do whatever it needs to happen by myself, even though I need to work with other people. But in terms of the beginning to the end of the process, it's kind of good to, to I don't, for example, I don't work with media servers. That's kind of, if you study projection design, you probably end up working with really expensive media servers. That means you need to work for a company, right? And that means you're not independent. That means you cannot think outside of the box in terms of what connecting to what. So I guess that's kind of a statement of the VJ culture. Uh, in terms of what it can be uh, when you're working, even for the industry, in the, in, even as a, in the entertainment business. So let, let's keep going. This is actually a guy that I love and a great art, artist from Austin. His name is Sorn. I'm doing another project with him. This is something we did 
uh, two years ago, where he designed this stuff, designed these statues, a part of this last album. And we kind of, we cut them in wood, and then we kind of start to play with video. So 3D video mapping can be also interesting to bring character animation to life, not just buildings. Uh, this was an art museum that invited me to pretty much to recreate a, a, a piece on the top of the, the museum. So using lights, animations. I'm going kind of fast now, I want to move on to other stuff. Uh, doing stage design, this was last year, South by Vimeo, official event. So the, the, this was in the, in, the, in the corner, what do I do? I, dis I used this corner to kind of put the whole design based on this geometry, pretty simple, using the actual space uh, in order to, re to think about the whole design strategies. Uh, stage design, same thing here last year with Colin in Austin, quite, a, quite an event. This guy is a great designer, by the way, Colin from Austin. Uh, same thing, Austin Music, all, all DJ work. Okay, this is what it gets really interesting. So, uh, talking about 12, 20K. Union, Union Station uh, in Kansas, a few months ago, and uh, no media servers, nothing. If that is a SketchUp file. I can show you this. Yeah, I mean, this. Uh, right. This is where pretty much. Oh man, no. <laughs> anyway, uh, I don't know. Well, don't worry about it. I was just wondering. It should happen. I don't know why. Oh man. Okay. Anyway, moving on. The the it's so what I did is pretty simple in terms of. Uh, and you can see Google Maps here. Into, uh, well, it's something, it's pretty simple. Instead of having to fly there to get basic measurements, you can actually go to m Google Maps. <laughs> and to understand basic things, and Google Earth now is free, by the way. You can actually have the 3D rotation of the building. So we decided to use 12, uh, 20K, and each one of these outputs is actually two video projectors. And what we use to run all this massive setup, which is pretty big, it's uh, two projectors, two projectors, two projectors. We have a data path, which I'm not sure you guys are familiar with. It's kind of like a, uh, a Matrox triple head to go, but it gives you four outputs. It's usually really used to, to work with LED panels. It's cheap, way cheaper than a media server, and it does the job. So what we did is pretty much use a one MacBook Pro, my machine, to send uh, six outputs, which we divide by 12 projectors. So we had, uh, and, the, and we had the 4K file resolution to project, and everything run on a, a recent routine in MacBook Pro file, which is pretty amazing, because if you tell this to someone in the industry, they will laugh in your face. They will say you need to hire 10,000, 15K uh, media servers. Anyway, I'm not going to do that. This was a long project. I'm just going to show the, yeah. So this was a commercial project as well. There was like some storytelling from the building, <laughs> a lot of things. But there is opportunities to do creative stuff. And we had a, a big animation team for this project. some mistakes in here. No, no, I don't think. <laughs> the thing is, when you're here, you don't really, you only see this kind of from there. Yeah, but you know what I mean? They're all right. taking video at the bottom. Yeah. Right. 
<laughs> and the, the, the cool thing about post-production, you can actually co co correct a lot of stuff. Anyway, there is opportunity to do something more experimental stuff towards the end. So this is it's kind of like standard 3D video mapping. But the, this is by far the biggest project I I was involved uh, in terms of uh, projection design. And this for me as a st still a student was kind of a statement because the university that I work with kind of believes in a very specific way of thinking that it kind of feels good to be able to be, do big, pro big projects kind of independent and not having a huge budget to work with. So uh, recently I did this really good project that I love in Boom Festival, which is a a festival, I'm not sure you guys heard about it, but it's a really good one, believe me. I'm kind of biased, it's in Portugal, <laughs> but, but it's, a, it's an opportunity for 150 different nationalities combined together through art and music. And uh, they invite me to, to do an installation, and uh, I think we had the 10K, and we decided to work with the uh, trees, and uh, we kind of did something with trees, kind of first approach to this uh, photography kind of works better to be honest just because you can you can you can capture some of the light but if you're there it works really interesting especially because we this was boom boom has a lot of travelers and people involved in spiritual journeys and there is a lot of elements to play there in terms of symbols and meanings uh, so a lot of this was kind of bringing the idea of a soul, a 3D element, and uh, it's, it was hilarious. If you guys were there, you, you can understand that there was a lot of, that there is a lot of meaning in something as simple as this. Using uh, nature and trees to project something ha was actually one of the most rewarding experiences I had in the last years. And uh, this takes me back to actually what I'm doing right now uh, for South By this year. Let me see. Uh, and Rodrigo, this guy here, which is kind of the master of quartz composer, is helping me. So what's going to happen this year in South By? There's going to be trees and, uh, in a public garden, the fourth in Guadalupe, where they usually have the South By interactive art. So what we're doing for this is pretty simple. And by the way, that's Schwarzenegger. This is a random guy. This is Rodrigo. That's with scan, scan on the Kinect. <laughs> this is not the final output. This is just some, th some things we're testing on. So the idea is using motion capture. You, you see my mouse, right? All of them are following my mouse in real time. So the idea is, as you move along, the, the, you're like in a public garden, the trees are literally going to be following you as you kind of go through, a, which can be kind of creepy, but, <laughs> but they seem to like the idea. And this was an extension of, uh, of what happened at Boom last year. And I'm going to move on to the final thing I want to talk about. Just to finish, this was another stage design in New Year for in Portland this year. 3D video mapping combined with, this is actually a uh, laser cut uh, fabric, which is kind of cool to do projections on because you can have really detailed elements uh, to project content. Anyway, so 3D video mapping, PhD. I decided that I wanted to work with dancers. I met my supervisor, which is an amazing person, and he got me really inspired in using these skills that I've been using towards events and parties, uh, towards people, working with people in motion and uh, representing this kind of environment, which is a more kind of fine art environment where no, people are not really puking as much, people are actually <laughs> sitting down. And so it gave me an opportunity to, to focus and uh, do high level work which I'm really proud of. This was the, the, the first project I did with him. It's kind of like a low res video. But it kind of makes a point when I first when I first started to, to work with uh, real time motion I, I wasn't really working with Kinect back then so I was doing this w using a touchpad like a, you guys know an iPad or any tablet so this is basic software that runs particles and I'm literally with some fingers trying to follow and understanding their motion in real time and it was pretty cool we did like five shows of this it was really cool but it's if I felt like after a lot of these shows I was spending all my energy just tracking manually tracking people and and doing these kind of explosions and stuff, but it, 
I, 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 I felt like I, I wanted to take this maybe to something what I could use some kind of technology that can actually do this for me so I can think about other stuff. And that's how I, I brought Kinect into the game. And uh, some of you might in our academia, so this is kind of the boring part, but I had to do a software uh, working with a, a developer. I'm not a great, I, I barely can code to be honest, guys. But I, I'm, I'm lucky enough to be working with people that are smart enough to design. If you have the right idea and if you put it out there in the internet, it happens. People actually get back to you and they will create something they believe in. This is what happened. I found this guy, Sebastian, he's from Switzerland. And I had this idea where dancers can actually be in front uh, of a Kinect camera and doing their ballet positions and the computer, the software element, uh, which is actually Quartz Composer, um, actually in real time is able to understand the motion and give a real time feedback to the performer. And this whole uh, kind of skeleton tracking strategies, uh, this kind of analysis in real time uh, that I use also for my PhD as the beginning uh, is what allowed me to do the, the following projects. So pretty much creating a software which understands the, the body movement, the body language, and is able to uh, have this kind of environment inside of a software. Uh, so the next step uh, working with visual arts is how you can tr translate this kind of uh, activity to whatever content you want to you wanna work with. For example, here it's Quartz Composer uh, playing with basic triangles, basic, basic shapes. Uh, I'm going to go back to this. And um, my, my concept was pretty simple. I, I, I had this geometry that I wanted to work with, but I wanted to use 3D video mapping. So I just don't, I just don't want uh, performers to be playing with like 2D content. I want performers to be inside of a 3D space playing with 3D content. And it's funny because I believe there was a project that was named Embodied, Embodiment before. So this project is called 3D Embodied, 3D Embodied. It's like, it's like an extension of using digital media with 3D uh, projections. And uh, this is some of the first tests I start to do. So I'm moving kind of, this is all digital by the way, moving in this environment, trying to control it. And this kind of gives an interesting challenge for the performer because he's kind of now dictating, just like a, a music instrument is, is dictating the whole 3D environment, which is a part of. That's MadMapper. This is MadMapper. So it's what's, what's happening right, uh, I'm actually running Quartz Composer okay. that uh, is rendering each one of these three outputs back, top and, and left. And uh, they actually render as a part of a 3D shape. There are then, if, so I can go into the physical space and I can uh, independently correct all this geometry really easily through the MadMapper. So you use Siphon, which is an open source software that kind of makes the connection between these softwares. Right. So a lot of this is actually uh, MadMapper, uh, Quartz Composer. So this is me before the, the show starts actually playing a little bit with it. It's kind of chaotic, kind of kind of interesting also. Anyway, this is small short clips of the show we did. I believe the end of 2012.
this kind of activity actually goes back to a lot of the ideas I'm working on. It has to do with spatial augmented reality, which is kind of how academia called 3D video mapping. It's kind of like the academia word for 3D video mapping. And it makes sense. You guys are used to augmented reality, which is in the phone. Now we're working with physical space, but it's digital because it's projected on. So it's spatial augmented reality. So this is kind of like a proof of concept, a prototype of how something like that can actually be performed and eventually it's now starting to appear in real life. I just saw a bike that comes with a projector that tells you the directions, projects on the floor. That's an example of spatial augmented reality. Yeah, we've been doing a lot of augmented reality. Mm -hmm. With phones? Yeah. It's the same concept, but we're using video projections, like allowing us to play with space, so th this show was kind of idea, how can we do this for, as a performance? So kind of to... Like this idea of performance inside of this space, coming outside, the similar shape. I think this kind of dialogue works pretty well. It's kind of interesting. I was told some people got actually noxious on the end of the show. Which is kind of cool, right? <laughs> you have about five. I have five, okay. So, um, dance and 3D video mapping. What I'm going to talk now in the next five minutes is pretty simple. Uh, as I start to work more with Kinect, which is a depth sensor, I'm sure you guys heard about it, I actually start to work a lot with a, a tool that is called Z-Vector. I actually met the developer back in South by Southwest, uh, and he, he showed me the first prototype, even before it was a software. And uh, I started to play with it, and I start to, uh, this is all real-time rendering that I, you can get using shaders and using your body and pointing the Kinect at you. So I've been kind of doing research and playing with this, taking weird selfies at me, based on this idea of space and three-dimensionality. And uh, this is all, I kind of like, it's kind of like painting with sensors uh, because it's, it's a way to, to us to, to experience this. Kinect is a technology, but also give us a unique language, just like a synthesizer. So one of the things I, I've done is actually, uh, I start to perform with this tool. This was in a Austin uh, Music Hall or long center with Amica. And this was the first time I performed uh, perform ever with this tool. As you can see, this is rendering her body in real time. And I'm just like controlling a virtual camera that is rotating around her. I'm like a, I'm like a control, I'm like a, I guess a digital cameraman because it's all in the software and I have it all into my MIDI controller. And I can bring shape, I, I can do extrusions, I, I can do go a little further than a regular camera. The fact that I can just rotate her image in 3D is pretty interesting. So I kind of start, I've been exploring a lot of that uh, and I've been working with a group that is called Quixotic. They're kind of big and they, they, they do big shows and they kind of uh, provide me the opportunity to do things I believe in a kind of different level then we can use some of these ideas, some of these technologies to, to in bigger shows. And this is just a few renderings that I, some of the shows we've been doing. Uh, it's all improv. What happens, we have a performer on stage and I'm like uh, using their body, using this virtual camera and this kind of uh, real-time visualization through motion as a way to give people a way to experience some kind of augmented performance experience. I can show you a little bit of a video just to uh, let me show you the teaser. This is a piece we call Fire Inside. So she's kind of like throwing and uh, creating some kind of digital extension of her motion. Uh, and this is what, what we've been doing a lot. Uh, another example, if you guys have an idea, same thing using an LED wall. Um, so it's all in real time, so it becomes like kind of like a playground. The performer can play with this, has a lot to do with space, how you perceive space. And this goes back a lot to some of the theory I'm using for the PhD. And just to finish this, you can, I, I've been actually able to try this kind of stuff using a 
Pepper's Ghost hologram, which is kind of cool. It's pretty cheap, thousand uh, dollars to make one, five hundred maybe. Uh, and the last thing I'm going to finish is one of the last projects I did, which is uh, bringing something you guys might know, which is the emotive. You guys know what emotive is? It's a brain-computer interface. Pretty much give us uh, raw data of your com of your brain. And I, I mean, I, I, me and another guy, Iago, did a performance where we're using this raw data and some of his meditation levels for a performance. It's called biomediation, and the guy is performing on stage. And uh, I'm going to show this video for two minutes just to illustrate the idea. So we're, we're capturing the, the data from Iago's. And the cool part about this, and I, on my side at least, is using it to make music as well. What I'm doing it, I'm connecting this interface to the Kinect camera. So think about it, you can drive a car uh, using your brain, same thing. Now you control, remember that virtual camera that I talk about that I control in shows? Iago is controlling that virtual camera. So he, he thinks right, he can ha yeah, the camera can go right. He thinks left, the camera can go left. Uh, and all these uh, elements, like we're, we're, we're capturing data that, can, that is actually being uh, represented from his body. The Kinect camera is uh, rendering his body in 3D in real time, some kind of 3D visualization. And this kind of activity, is, you see, is actually coming from the, the data from the emotive. And it's kind of difficult to explain and to illustrate. Uh, I hope we can perform this show again soon. We did it last week. Uh, one of my favorite parts is actually here, and I can explain why. So what, what happens here, the, as the guy is trying to meditate, I literally have three uh, LED uh, strobe lights pointed at his face that I'm projecting in. So what happened is the, the camera, the depth sensor camera goes crazy, I lose control of it. It's pure uh, randomness bugs, what, I don't even know what it is. I don't, and, uh, and it's also, it's really difficult for Iago because the data goes crazy. So it's some kind of neuro, neuro feedback project concept thing we're working on. Uh, and I guess I will leave it here. Yeah, okay, okay, so to, for real-time shows, uh, let's put it like this, for real-time, so pre-production, Cinema 4D, After Effects, Photoshop, uh, Illustrator, uh, there is a lot of them you can use. This is kind of the main ones, I guess, for pre-production, to prepare content, to design elements. Uh, to manipulate them, uh, either Quartz Composer, Open Frameworks, uh, you have Touch Designer as well, uh, VVVV is becoming pretty big, uh, especially if you work with New Kinect. You can use the SDK from the New Kinect 2. Uh, there is Kinect development on Mac or on PC? It's I actually I have it on Mac. It's all on Mac, and I'm using. Uh, it's called it's called the, the one I use for Kinect is called OpenNI. Uh, OpenNI, and uh, the, I'm I'm running a software that is not free. OpenNI it is free, but Apple. Uh, destroyed OpenNI right now, which sucks. That's why we don't have the, the drivers for the new Kinect on Mac. Uh, what happens, I use, uh, what's the name? Uh, Animate. Animate. It's, uh, it's from this, it's the same guys that create Blender. They have, they have this Kinect interface that we can control all the joints and we can map that. We can map them. So Animate is the, the one I usually use. If you don't want to spend money, use tri uh, tri uh, Triplex. It's kind of like the open source. It's more buggy. It's difficult. And there is also another one. What's the Synapse? Synapse. Synapse with the with the eye. That's kind of like the first one out there. So Synapse probably might be the easiest to, to start playing with, with Kinect. Maybe you use the latest Kinect. You said? I have the latest Kinect. Actually, we we just been testing the last days. It's you it need discontinued it. I think. The, the new Kinect? The new Kinect, we're, we're trying to get one and we're trying to order them, you can't order them anymore. Really? Yeah, well, like, we're, we've tried everywhere. Well, wait, nobody has them. You can buy the Xbox, the Xbox maybe. One. Yeah, yeah. We can buy an Xbox One, I guess. I got the developer's one back okay. in the days. Uh, 
honestly, the, the limitations we have right now, yeah. it's, it's so we difficult. Have a, we have a regular connect as well. If you want a regular connect, <coughs> shops. Yeah, we have one. They're super, like, they're super cheap. Yeah, the cool thing for the students is we have uh, three projectors. We have, uh, and we're getting more. We have uh, triple heads, like we were talking about. Mm -hmm. We have two of them. So, mm -hmm. and you said you can tie those to do six, or no? Uh, or no? For Kinect, you, you can... You no, can no, for, for just projection mapping in general. Yeah, you can do as many okay. projectors as you want. The, the new MacBook Pro actually has two outputs. Okay. So if you connect two uh, matrix, two matrix will have to go to each output, you have six outputs. Independent... Yeah, in the uh, just, for your, just for the standard projection software, I, I, I saw, like, I know that like, you talked about MadMapper. Uh -huh. and are you using Resolute? I saw some like, shots of your screen using Resolute. No, I don't. I used to use Resolume back in the days. Not as much. Not as much. I, I haven't been using it. Uh, no, not Resolume. Modulate sometimes if I'm running uh, clips. Like for to, to work. the days that I used to VJ a lot, I used to. Yeah, I used to. I used to. I, I'm just going to show this. I need to. You were. T you start to talk by this. Uh, you start, this was the project, I totally forgot, to, this was the project we were just talking about. This is like the last project I'm working on on the floor, doing projections on the floor. And this is actually using a software that's called Emotion. Okay. Emotion, uh, it's kind of weird, buggy software, but it's really good to work with uh, inputs like Kinect and other stuff. Uh, it's open source as well, you don't have to so pay. It has It's different. Uh, Resolume, it's like... It's a, it's a way to play clips right, right. in real time. This is very different. This, this pretty much, it, exactly. It's all factor based and what it happens is apply physics, particles, particles and physics pretty much. You, you explode, you, you modulate different physics to grids, to dots, to particles. So it's kind of different softwares, different strategies. Resolume is good if you want to VJ, if you want to. Right, I think that was one of like, if you were going to do like uh, your building uh, installation, Building, what, what would be your go-to software or something like that? Uh, if I'm just running the clips like through audio, maybe modulate. Just because it's the one I know. I don't right, think it's okay. probably the best one, but just because the one I know the best. Yeah. Resolute. We have that. Yeah, I, I love modulate. Just because it works with MadMapper directly. <laughs> VDMX might be better for many ways to incorporate like Quartz Composer as well. Any other questions? Other questions. So when you're working with these clients, whether it be an uh, EDM artist or mm -hmm. a museum, how much creative freedom do you have or do they come with you with an idea? Right. How, how does that work? Okay, uh, good question. Depends. Depends if you're, you... The ones who give you a lot of freedom usually do not want to pay you. Let's put it like that. If you, if you want to make money, you probably have to, to be confined to a specific script. But there is still, you, you, there is opportunities to, to bring creativity. And a lot of it is also, a lot of people, like I got emails from companies, they, they, they want to do 3D video mapping. They don't even know what 3D video mapping is. You know? so, it's, so now you're talking to a marketing department that you can, you can play with that. You know? They don't know what they're talking about. So you can probably. Well, that's what we found too, because uh, Andrew actually got us some projectioning over at Palo Alto. And you know they gave us pretty free reign on like what could be shown, but you kind of even when you're doing it as a consultant, like you feel like you should be, probably make it look pretty much like what they would think. They right. Would. And so, and then we've also done free ones, like you said, and that's where they're like, you can do whatever you want as long as it's cool, and you're like, all right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So. <laughs> yeah. How are you translating the raw data from the emotive into music data or visual data? Okay, uh, OSC right now, and oh, we're and, and we're using Max, Max uh, MSP to to convert OSC to MIDI, and then we're incorporating uh, the data from the emotive. That's Iago, which is the musician in uh, biomediation. Uh, is really good at a Maxim SP and is pretty much and is having issues actually. We're just talking about it. Is having some issues in how you, you can translate this data. But it's doable. You can also use OIC or MIDI. Okay. Uh, the raw data, what Emotive gives you uh, in the software, they give you like uh, six uh, values that are already like designed for outputs, like meditation, right. engagement, concentration. Like alpha beta again. Ex exactly, mm -hmm. yeah. So, but you can go to the raw data and you can work with Ableton Live, for example, directly. Really? Yes, that's how we do. everything is running through Ableton Live. And Maximus speak makes you the bridge between them. I'm so excited because I'm like, we have all of that. <laughs> One last question, anybody?
All right, well, thank you very much. Thank you. So, um, think, first of all, thank you all for coming. Um,